Pardon me. Second Kings. Gotta get to it so I'll know. Second Kings chapter five. And y'all probably know this story. I know that you know this story. And it's like, the more I thought about it, it's like, okay, Lord, let's just talk about this story for a minute. And we're going to read the story, and we're going to refer to it, and we're going to dissect it a little bit. Okay? All right. But before we do, let me just go ahead and pray, because I'm going to read a lot, and it's like it's hard to read everything and then come back, because you know I like to stop in between. So let's go ahead and just pray. Father, right now. Father, you know what, what you have in your word for us today? Father, prepare our hearts, Lord. Prepare our hearts that we be able to minister the way you asked us to minister, Father. Father, Holy Spirit, I ask you right now, sweep through this place. Bring our body to life. Let our hearts be receptive. Let us receive what you have. Father, let your word be dwelt in our heart deep, deep, deep. And that we'd be sealed with you, Holy Spirit, so it'll manifest bear fruit, that somebody, just somebody would be able to take something out of it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. This is the healing of Naaman. So this is a man, this is a general, he goes, he said, and once again, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation, the king of Ar uh, Arab, Ar Aram, had great, uh, had great administration no. Admiration. <laughs> it is a, we are a little tired, aren't we? For Naaman, the commander of his army, because through him the Lord had given Aram great victories. But through Naaman was a mighty warrior and he suffered from leprosy. Let's see that. At least he knew. He said, through him the Lord had given. See, he had given him great victories. So at least we know that he understood. He said, or... You know, the writer of this book wrote, he knew that it was God that was giving the victories, and we know that it is him. He goes, in this war, he suffered from leprosy. So at this time, Armenian rays were, were being invaded in the land of Israel, and among them, their captives, was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. She was a slave, in other words. In other words, there's these, this king is going out, and he's sending out raids. And as they're going out, you know, Naaman was a man. He was a commander in the army. And he found this young girl, and apparently he must have liked her for his wife. He said he just takes her, he puts her in his home, and she's there. And she's able to say in some versions, it says she ministered to his wife. Amen? Mm -hmm. He said, who had given Naaman's wife. One day the girl said to his, her mistress, you know, she's talking to her mistress. Apparently they must have had a good relationship. He, she must have been a good mistress because she had the, the capacity to go and speak. She was being taken care of. And she must have been taken care of because she had enough concern for her mistress husband. If, you, if we get back to this story. Let's look at this. He says, um, may, one day she said, may, um, I wish my master would go see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. So Naaman told the king and the young, what the young girl had said. Go and visit the prophet, the king of Aram told him. I will send a letter of introduction for you to take, you to, the, to, take to the king of Israel. So Naaman started out carrying as gifts 750 pounds of silver, 150 pounds of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. The letter to the king said, with this letter I present my sermon Naaman, I want you to heal him of his leprosy. Let's pause there for just a moment. So many times we don't realize that we will pay anything when we have an ailment, when we're feeling sick, we'll pay anything to get some kind of alleviation. Am I right? Anything. Look at all the stuff that he was carrying. He was just a commander, but I mean, he was the great wealth. He had money, obviously. And he's got, he has all this gold and his silver and clothing. And he's like, okay, I'm going to go. They're telling me this. I, I went to the king. Hey, please release me. Let me go and get my healing. He said, sure, of course I am. You're a great commander. How much more am I going to do for you? Why not? Why wouldn't I? Here, as a matter of fact, I'm going to write a letter of introduction for you. Here, king, here you go. Here's my letter of introduction. Will you please heal me of leprosy? Now, keep in mind, in Israel, no one had been healed of leprosy up to this point. Didn't mean that it didn't exist. Now, we know about Miriam. I'm talking about in Israel. Okay? 
So at this point, no, no one had, had been healed of leprosy, and you're coming to me, and you're asking me to heal you of leprosy. Right? King wasn't really happy about that one. I mean, think about it. It's like, what is he doing? I'm not even going to continue reading. I'll just tell you the story. He's like, what is this? What is this letter? What is this going on? What do you want me to do? Is this some kind of a trap? I'm just paraphrasing here. You can read it for yourself. I'm paraphrasing here. Is this a trap? What is it that you're doing? Oh my gosh, you want me to heal him of leprosy? Who says I can heal? Let me just rip my clothes right now because we're in a lot of trouble. I'm in distress. I'm upset. You want me to do what? I can't do that. There was a man of God, but God, but God, he heard that the king had ripped his robes. He said, what's going on? What is this? What's, what, what's going on there? He said, they're bringing me this man and they want me to heal him of leprosy. They want me to heal him of leprosy. This is a trap. Because what happens if I don't heal him? What's going to go on? I mean, are they going to come and invade us? Now keep in mind, he had a man of God in his presence. But he's going through this. How many times have we encountered something and we're like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, what is this? This is the enemy attacking me. No, we just keep going. It's like we don't look for the man of God to pray for you. We don't look for God's presence. We don't start to call on the Holy Spirit. We just know that the enemy is against us. But we don't know where to go. Or we don't choose not to go. But it's like this man, this man of God said, you know what? I will take care of this. He said, I'll take care of this. And the real important part is here. Here is a young girl. All she had to do is give the word. All she had to do was tell him about this man of God. That was her role. I mean, God had allowed her to become a slave, to place her in this home, to for him to be healed of leprosy and to be glorified. Now you got to realize this was a commander. So I'm sure he was in a chariot. I'm sure he had his breastplate. I'm sure he had his robes in some sense or his cape. I'm thinking of Roman soldier, but it's not what he was. But I'm looking at that man, and I'm seeing all this stuff on him. I see his title. I see his privilege. He had all this gold, so you know he had an air about him. And I'm not saying he was arrogant yet. We're getting there. But do you see what I'm saying? He must have come in, and he's got this gold and clothing and silver that he's going to present to this king or this man of God. Right? Right? And to, her, to his dismay, he's expecting the man of God to go and do something. Elisha doesn't even come out. Elisha doesn't even come out. And like Pastor Starnes, we need you to pray. We need you to go to the hospital and pray. And you say, uh, just tell him to go and do this and he'll be all right. That's what Elisha did. Yep. Tell him to go wash seven times in the river, in the Jordan River. Now, keep in mind, Jordan River is muddy. Yeah. Jordan River is not a pretty river. It's 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 you know it's it's kind of muddy and sludgy and you know how many of us when we go to the lake we want to go where the sandy beach. We don't want to go where we go and everything is slimy. I really don't even get in the water. I like the ocean better. That's the way I was raised. You know I can get you know go to South Padre and get to the beach, but it's like get me to Louisville Lake. I'm like oh I'll consider, I'll think about it. it. Takes a lot to get me in there. You know, but I'm telling you, it's like he's like it, it's not. It wasn't a pretty river, and that's even what he says. He goes, "What?" He doesn't even come out and and hold my hand and anoint me and say something. Come on, get a get a cloth, get the people together, let's lay a hand. He didn't even do that. That's what he's expecting. He's wanting to do something. La 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 la, you're healed, right? Because that's what he wants in his mind. How many times do we do that? I know that I do that. And I'm not saying that I'm proud of that, but I'll say, Lord, I expect you to move. I don't say that I expect you. I, I, I know within my heart that that's what I'm saying without trying to say that. But I'll say, Lord, can you do this so that I'll know this? Lord, will you do this? I know this is the way it's supposed to work out. Lord, can you please work it out this way? And that's what Naaman was doing. He's like, what? You want me to go wash in the river? 
You didn't even come and greet me. You didn't come and see me. You didn't come and look at my pomp and circumstance. You didn't come and see the army and the entourage that I'm carrying with me. Did you not see? I even polished my armor for you. Well, I didn't, but somebody else did. You know? <laughs> Pretty much. And he's like, you know what? Forget this. Forget this. His healing was at hand, but he didn't want to humble himself to do it. He said, we have other rivers that we can go where I come from. They're beautiful rivers. You know, you've gone in this. How many times have you heard, oh, Louis Little Lake is not pretty, but Ray Roberts is. Well, you know what? The man of God wasn't asking him to go to Ray Roberts. He was asking him to go to Louis <laughs> Amen? Amen? He was telling him, go to the Jordan. And he's like, you know what? Forget this. I'm done. Because we won't humble ourselves to do what God has asked us to do. Because sometimes it may just be so simple as just sit still and be still and know that I am God. We don't have to do anything. And he sat there and, he, and somebody, one of his wise servants comes and says, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, wait what's it going to hurt? What's it going to hurt to get in the river? What's it going to hurt? What's it going to hurt? Just go get in the river. Because you might get your healing. I mean, sometimes we got to get to that point, Sister Christian. We just got to get to the point where it's like, wait, let's see. God just wants me to do what? What? I can do that. Yeah. What's it going to hurt? Yeah, I mean, so many times we're so worried to speak out and give God's word. When he gives you a word, you don't want to speak out. Why? What's it going to hurt? If your heart is pure and you're seeking his face and he's giving you a word, why not? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He said, all right. Now keep in mind. He has all this pomp and circumstance as he's going. I'm sure that his army or the entourage that he had may have known that he was there to get healing, but they probably didn't know what kind of healing he was going to get. Because I'm sure for leprosy, he was covering that up. Because at that time, you didn't hang out with other people if you had leprosy. You were a cast out. That goes to show you, you know what, even then, when you have money and, and positions, you can get away with some things. He was going to have to humble himself and take his armor off. And off came the breastplate. I rushed. Off came the cape. Off came his helmet. Off came the cuffs. Do you know how humbling that must have been for him to go and try to stand in a river? Off came his sandals. And little by little, he was laying everything down. And the Lord is saying the same thing of us. He's like, little by little, just leave the little things behind and, you know, be vulnerable to me. And his men must have been there waiting for him, not knowing what's going to happen. And then when they took off his sleeves and they saw, can you imagine? Let's just get real. <sighs> the gasp. All this time. Now, some of them must have thought, oh my, do I need to go bathe too? I've been with this man, you know, you hang out with a dog, you pick up some fleas. You know, they must have been thinking, I was like, oh no, do I need to go get in that river too? Do I, do I need cleansing too? Is your vulnerability getting to the point that the people around you are looking and saying, do I need to go to where the fountain is and get cleansed as well? Do I need to go where the blood of Jesus is and get cleansed as well so that I can be white as snow? Amen. He's saying that. The gasp on some. And then when he went, he dipped. Dipped once. No. Twice, no. Do you imagine? But when he did, and he received that healing, now he must have gasped. It's like, can you imagine what he must have felt like? When others saw it too, because keep in mind, your miracles, people are seeing them if you're telling them. That's why we have the board. We have people to know that God still moves. God is still answering prayer. God is still performing miracles. Amen. He's still performing healings. He's still doing that. I'm not just talking about the miracle of being able to wake up in the morning. I'm talking about he still has his hand on his people and things are being shifted and bodies are being, you know, being restored and relationships are being reconciled. God is still in the business of bringing things together. 
Well, he was so joyous after that. Huh. He went straight to Elijah. Hey, 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 hey. I'll give you what I got. Here, here, just take it. No. I, I, I've, got, I've got gold, I've got silver, I've got clothing. I have all this for you. Elijah said, no, that's okay. I don't want that. I don't need that. See, do you understand that sometimes we get so confused because we think that what the world has for us is going to be able to take care of what we need. I'm going to tell you something. We don't need to worry about that because if we're serving the God, we've got all the power that we need. Right. Amen. Amen. If we truly serve God with our whole heart, we don't have to worry about anything. He said he has his eye on the sparrow. How much more would he take care of you? Right, Pastor Starks? Amen. Has he let you down this far? No. Amen. Amen. Okay, I've had some lean days. I'll tell you that. There's times I had lean days, but I always had something. Amen. I've always had something. I can come up with something. Dale and I can be very creative in our food, in our, in our menus. Amen. God is good. I remember one time we were down to five dollars. Dad doesn't know this. We were in the valley and we were down to five dollars. And five dollars was pretty good then. And I said, I can make us a meal. Five dollars. He said, You can do five dollar meal? I go, I can do us a five dollar meal. There's three of us. He goes, Really? I said, Yep. Yeah. Sure enough. When God is a chicken. And I prepared it myself. Not not one that I went and bought that was made, not like that. When God is some broccoli. And got us some mac and cheese and a little bit of milk and butter to make that. Five dollars by the grace of God. I made us macaroni and cheese. I made us buttered broccoli. And I roasted us a chicken. And not only did we eat, we had enough for leftovers. God has never left me. I've had to get creative sometimes. I've had to have lean sometimes. But he's never left me. Amen. And that's what the man of God was saying. He goes, I don't need your things. I don't need your gold. I don't need your silver. Are you kidding? What I have is so much more. But I love what Naaman did. He said, are you sure? He said, yeah. He goes, well then please, can I have some dirt from here? Can I have some holy land from here? Can I have the earth that you're standing on? Can I have some of that? In other words, if, let, me, let me translate this for you. All right, we're in a service. God is moving, and they want to bless us. And we say, you know what? God moves in our hearts and says, don't receive that blessing. He says, well, can I at least have the chair where I receive my healing? It's like, yeah, take it. Two mules. I mean, he got enough that two mules could pack. He had earth so that when he went back to his land, he had land that he could call it holy, and he could sacrifice there. That was amazing. He had a true, grateful spirit. He wanted to take his chair. Love, that's the only way I can translate. He's taking his chair, and he's going to think about it. And every time he sees that chair, or he sits in that chair, he's going to know that God moved in his life on his behalf. He's going to see that chair, and he said, Lord, I'm going to honor you, and I'm going to sacrifice, not to the chair, but what represents the chair, and that's the movement of God. That's what he was saying. He was, I'm going to take this land. And let me tell you something. There's times that I'm going to have to go between the heathens, and I have to bow because I'm going to be before the king. And he said, but let the Lord forgive me for that because it's not in my heart. Sometimes you've got to be amongst people you don't want to be around. Or you're in a situation that you don't want to be with. But you've got to say, Lord, forgive me for being here because my heart is not here. My heart is with you. Amen. Amen. That's what he said. He goes, have him forgive me for that. Because he knew as a commander there was times he was going to have to take the king into a pagan temple. And he was going to have to bow. But he said, you know what? I may bow with my head. I'm not bowing with my heart. I'm not bowing with my heart. That's what we have to get to that understanding. That we're transparent like that before the Lord said, Lord. Let us remember the things that you've done in our lives. Let us know that it doesn't matter. There's so many lessons in this. I wanted, I had even thought about doing a series on this just to start with, with the little slave girl. It doesn't matter what your circumstance is or who you are. He used a slave girl for this man to get his healing. For God to get the glory. For God to move in his life. And even Jesus back in Luke, I believe Luke 4, 21, I believe it is. I have it in my notes. He 
says, you know what? There was a man. He goes, because he was talking to the people. He goes, you know what? I'm not received amongst my own people. I'm not. In other words, sometimes the people that you think will be receiving what you say, he goes, they won't. He said there was a there was people that had leprosy, but only Naaman got it, and he was from Syria. He wasn't even in the area. So even Jesus refers to Naaman. All because a slave girl decided to open her mouth and say, Hey, I know a man. We know a man. I know a man. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And then sometimes even our arrogance, our pomp and circumstance within ourselves, we have to lay that down so that somebody else can see the cleansing power of Jesus. We have to lay down our armor, our robes, our helmet, our shoes, so that when we go and humble ourselves and dip in, somebody can say, I need healing too. Mm -hmm. I need healing too. I want to be cleansed as well. That was what the Lord was putting in my heart. It's like, oh my gosh, sometimes we just need to get to that point. And then to say, you know what, it doesn't matter because the true glory that, that God gets is he is able to bless his people. He blesses his people. Elisha didn't need all the gold. Elisha didn't need the silver. I could even go on to the rest of the story where this young man went going after it. Elisha's, Elisha's little, you know, his, his servant. Mm -hmm. He went running after the gold and silver and lied about it. And said, my, 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 you know, my master changed his mind. We need it for this. But Elisha knew. And he said, what? From this day forward. And it didn't just say that he had leprosy. It said his generation careful because sometimes what you're doing uh -huh. is going to fall on your babies. Yeah. And that's the one that hurt the most. But it goes both ways. You serve God. We talked about that two weeks ago. We serve God and we have a promise. He's going to honor that. Mm -hmm. We choose not to serve God and serve someone, a pagan God. That's going to fall on our babies too. Amen. I know we're a few group, a group that's pretty few here. You know, last week we had a Starnes family reunion. Brother Starnes, what happened with our family reunion this week? I know, we should have had another potluck. <laughs> but since we are few, why don't we come up here and let's pray? Let's just pray. Let's just pray. There's some of us that are going through some things. I've talked to a few of you.